Director Allred? Here. Director Coleman? Here. Director Barney? Here. And uh, Director Morgan's here. And Director Ballantyne? Here. Okay, so we're all in attendance. Um, next is approval of the agenda. A motion was the, the agenda is presented. Second. Uh, there was a correction. Oh, let's see where it said that. Go ahead. Uh, Carrie, could you uh, address that? We didn't have any minutes, right? Are you talking about the minutes? It was, uh, yes. Yeah, we'll do that for consent. We won't do that for agenda. Okay. All right. So we've had a first and a second uh, roll call vote for approval of the agenda. Director Allred? Yay. Okay. Director Ballantyne? Yes. Director Morgan? Yes. Director Coleman? Aye. Director Barney? Aye. Okay unanimous approval next is community announcements and public comments not on the agenda i have something uh kathy hansen mojave transportation museum just want to uh, let everyone know plane crazy saturday uh june 15th will be oh it's not working sorry much better can you hear me now <laughs> yeah. kathy hansen mojave transportation museum a plane crazy saturday on june 15th will be a celebration of life memorial service for uh dick Rattan. it will be held at the stewit event center um, at 11 30. at 10 a.m there will be a missing man formation fly over the flight line um, by the airmanship foundation with scott glazier uh, there is quite a lineup of speakers uh, for this event and um, reservations are being taken on the Mojave Airport uh, website and thank you, thank you, Nicole, thank you Mojave Airport for doing that because we expect a large crowd. We expect a lot of airplanes to fly in, just had an email this morning or STS wants to bring their F5. So that's kind of nice. And so I think we'll have a, a, a large gathering in the event center. I think we'll have a large gathering of people just coming to playing crazy. And um, I have ordered a plaque. And of course it takes six weeks for it to be uh, completed and sent to us. So I won't have it on the day of the event but I ordered it for Legacy Park. It'll match the other plaques that are there, 18 by 24 inches. And I've sent a copy of what it will look like to uh, our general manager, Ariel. And I think that we're going to do a good job in honoring Lieutenant Colonel Dick Rutan. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you for the whole, all the hard work you've been putting into that so far, and I know there's more hard work to come. Any other community announcements? Public comments? Okay, agenda moving on to item three, the consent agenda. So it's uh, three, three of them. A is minutes of the regular board meeting from the 7th. B is minutes from the board meeting of the 14th and then a check register item. Which, uh, which minutes had correction? That's the last, the last meeting we had the 14th, the, the closed session uh, didn't have an indication of the vote that we took to authorize Scott. There were other corrections. Not it. Okay. Was it just, was it seven and the 14th or just the 14th that had correction? I 
So, but you you have the corrected version attached to this agenda for the May step, correct? Yeah. So, can we consent agenda A and C, and then discuss B separately? Yep. Yeah. Right way now. Yep. We're going to make changes to B, then we can put it under um, number four action items. And I make a motion to as uh, consent agenda items uh, A and C we approve those. Present. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we got a motion and a second. Okay. All those, uh, I guess we got to do a roll call. Uh, Director Allred? Yes. And, and again, to clarify for me, because it's hard to hear you guys sometimes, we're uh, voting on item A correction or all of them? No, we're consent agenda level approving A and C. And then we need to discuss the corrections to B. That's why I made a motion for only A and C. Okay. Uh, Director Allred? Yeah, your vote. Director Ballantyne? Yes. Yes. Okay. Director Coleman? Aye. Director Barney? Aye. And Director Morgan? Aye. Unanimous carry of A and C. Okay. And then reviewing um, item B, it's for the, uh, my comment was the closed session covered the uh, contract we authorized on for the consulting, but it didn't address uh, the 3-2 vote we had to authorize Scott to present an offer for a CEO candidate. So what we need to what we need to record in the minutes is yeah. who made the motion, who did the second, and um, who voted how how they voted. Okay. So do do we recall who made the motion? Bob made the yeah. Motion. I second. The, the motion was by Director Allred, and it was seconded. Oh, no. by, it was you. It was you, and I seconded. It. Are we talking about for the CEO contract offer? Oh, no. no. Oh, no. that's what I'm referring to, not the, not the the, the uh, Stewit Consulting. We we are talking about the CEO offer in closed session, right? So, yeah. all right. So let yeah. me. All we report in closed session is that upon motion by director so and so, seconded by director so and so, the board voted whatever the vote was to authorize legal counsel to make an offer to the CEO candidate. Yes. Right. And uh, Director Allred made that motion. Then we had more no, discussion. Uh, then we had about 30 minutes of discussion no, where no. someone said, we haven't even had anyone make a motion. I said, yes, we did. Director Allred already did. Because I was going to second it, but we had more discussion. Could you could you clarify that, Director Allred? Was that not the case? I I my my vote was to award a monthly contract, a one month, the first month contract for two so with. You're talking about Steve. Yeah, right. Yeah, about I know. Steve. We're we're so yeah. So yeah, director we're on the wrong vote. Yeah, Director Morgan, the four four directors in here all recall you making the motion. Okay, that's fine. We we had a long discussion and then I said, okay. So and then Chuck was the second. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And then we had a 3-2 vote with, uh, I believe there was two no's, right? There was no abstaining. There were two no's. Two no's. Three right. Three. Director Ballantyne, Director um, Barney were no's, and the other three were yeses. All right. We will, um, you can go ahead and approve that uh, today, and Lynn will make those changes for the final version to be signed. Thank you. Yeah, I make a motion that item B with changes as just discussed be made by land shortly um, to, to approve to adopt those minutes. Second. Okay. Roll call vote. Director Allred? Yes. Director Barney? Aye. Director Coleman? Aye. 
Director Ballantyne. Aye. And Director Morgan, aye. So unanimous pass for the correction. Okay, next item is action items. Uh, first one is a public works landscape contract award. Good afternoon, directors. This is a uh, renewal of our existing landscape maintenance contract for the public areas, which include the uh, softball field, our gardens, uh, gate guardians, and our public buildings, including uh, the front of this building and building one. It's uh, our lower low better was uh, sharper landscaping, which in uh, back to the uh, fiscal impact of 51,600 budget, budgeted dollars. Uh, this is an increase of about $1,900 a month from our 2001 contract. And staff recommend that we uh, award uh, the landscape maintenance contract to Sharper landscaping. So who was the landscaping firm we were using um, on the 2021 contract? Sharper landscaping. That was Sharper? Same contract. Okay. okay. So there was a there was a slight increase due to uh, the, the scope increase in a couple of areas and because we have not had a rate increase since 2000. Yeah, it, okay. it scope increase is particularly significant. Um, we went increased the, the frequency of the areas of uh, some of the areas in particular the the rock garden on Belshaw and the gate garden and so on. We increased the frequency that they're attended to. I don't suppose uh, I'm looking at the Glenn's lawn care, um, and it's an order of magnitude difference. Uh, was that just for the contract we had set out? That was their bid, or did they that, offer something? No, that was their bid based on they were both okay. issued the same scope of work, and their bid was significantly different. Um, would be alarming, but we have used sharper landscaping for quite some yeah. time, so I, I feel that uh, they're, they're, they are. Mm -hmm. What's the amount of the contract? Uh, annually, $51,600. Need a motion to uh, approve. Yeah. Any other thoughts or comments? Floyd. Nothing from the public. Yeah, we talked, and that's that's not included in this. Though we do those on a on case by case basis, but that's not on an annual contract. Huh. Okay, did I hear a motion? Nope. Motion to approve the uh, contract. Okay. Do we have a second? Okay. Okay, roll call vote. There's no other discussion. Uh, one last question. Uh, so we have the 51,600 budgeted dollars um, and yeah, 4,300 times two is 51,600. Um, did we just coincidentally budget exactly the correct number or? all the landscaping that comes out of repairs and maintenance bucket so that's a very large bucket so as of right now we have the amount in there budgeted that we're to finish out the year for the next two months and then when we budget in july going forward we'll make sure that it's marked okay so it's not budgeted yet but it will it, there's money available in the budget because repairs and maintenance um doesn't necessarily every line item so just things come up so we can't identify everything of course but we're not going to go over budget because of this particular item for two months yeah, thanks for yeah. clarifying. I just wanted to make yeah, sure no. we're like, how did, wow, somebody say it. But okay, yeah. now I understand what that doesn't have it in. All right. I have no more questions. Okay, so roll call vote. Director Allred? Aye. Director Ballantyne? Aye. Director Coleman? Aye. Director Barney? Aye. Director Morgan? Aye. Unanimously passes for the contract for landscaping. Item A, action item B is approval of CEO contract. Uh, so if you would, uh, Mr. Nave, update us on the status. Sure, uh, so per the board's direction at the last special meeting, an offer was made um, to the candidate, the um, the offer letter just said the duties are standard GMCEO duties with an accept mutually acceptable start date. 
base salary $245,000 per year, a three-year state put bonus of $30,000, benefits per the district's employee benefit plan, uh, at-will employment. Um, The candidate replied with a counteroffer of $265,000 as starting salary, but said that the other terms were otherwise acceptable. If whatever the pleasure of the board is, if if you move forward with this, then what I would ask is uh, approval to finalize the contract and have the board president sign it and countersign with the candidate when when it's ready. So I have I have a uh, statement I prepared that I'd really like to make um, that pertains to the CEO hiring. Uh, it's only 20 sentences long. Uh, you have to count if you so choose. Uh, but I would like to get through the statement before we launch off into discussion on uh, any one particular area. Next. A quick summary of where we are with CEO hiring. At the last meeting, the board voted to make an offer to a CEO, potential candidate, and then immediately after, voted to put Sue Witt on contract to help us find the CEO. And then I get a notice a few days ago from a board member asking me, us, uh, to fill out a score sheet scoring both this candidate and the previous candidate. Uh, and it's a list of items created by Sue Witt that he presented to us at the last special meeting. Um, and I don't really understand why we're in this situation. I'm a little bit shocked uh, that we made an offer to a candidate without being a background check or even discussing resume as a group. And uh, then we, we did some things that were a little bit incoherent, as I just mentioned. We didn't discuss an interview strategy at a time. At least one board member at the last meeting was surprised we were going to interview that candidate at all. Uh, and not only did we not even take a day to sleep on our thoughts after speaking with this candidate, um, pertinent discussion was cut off and the vote was just taken. Uh, the point of having five of us is to bring different perspectives and discuss issues uh, with the idea that we make decisions best together. Not only are we moving forward with the candidate, we didn't bet against any criteria other than our own personal obfuscated ideas. We didn't even do that at all. And then we now have Stu on contract to find a CEO. And we're scoring David and Andy against a sheet. We won't negotiate with Andy for some reason. And the sheet that we're scoring them against um, was actually something Stu intended as a rough draft to guide discussion with all the five of us to a comprehensive list of criteria that we could use to screen the CEO. It was never intended as a final product as presented. I'm deeply concerned at the lack of willingness um, for us to coordinate together as functioning boards. And I am particularly concerned about the lack of diligence we are collectively putting into shooting an offer off the table. I'm not going to pontificate on what a significant, complex, unique facility this is. We all know that. I do believe we should be treating this process of hiring a CEO with more thoughtfulness and a little bit more care. Uh, I recommend we not continue with the offer and we thank David Smith for his enthusiasm and initiative, and he certainly put himself uh, uniquely on our radar, and I would love to see him reply through a bit of process. And I recommend we instead come up with an actual methodology for hiring that includes what do we want to see up, includes how are we going to solicit applicants, and how are we going to narrow down candidates, and of course, how are we actually going to do a background? Thank you for listening. Okay. Uh, I'd like to comment and respond to some of Director Barney's observations. Um, I don't agree with a lot of the conclusions. I agree with uh, most of what you said as far as the um, procedurally or historically, if you will, uh, the chain of events, but I don't I don't see eye to eye at all with the conclusions, um, and that's fine. Uh, it would be nice if we were more aligned, but the beauty of having five elected officials is that uh, the majority will rule, and we may not always agree. 
we didn't agree on some of the previous candidates we selected with far less criteria than we used to vote on the most recent one. Um, there was uh, quite a bit of vetting of this candidate. He was interviewed for over three hours by Director Coleman, myself, and acting CEOs, um, Ariel Sewell. Uh, all three of us found him to be a viable candidate and uh, and would and made that recommendation to the board to have further interviews, which we did. Uh, and we came to a majority agreement that we should extend an offer. The, the dissent of those that were not prepared to extend an offer at this time uh, there, how do I say this? It's, it's my perception that because they didn't agree with the majority and wanted to take a different process, criticized the process and said, we must go with, uh, you know, basically using Stu as a headhunter. I don't disagree that Stu would be a valuable asset in that case. Um, in, in my estimation, we had a bird in the hand and we made a vote. We retroactively uh, applied, Stu said what he gave us was more than enough as a guidelines for a selection criteria. I chose to evaluate the previous two candidates we had, the, the ones that were selected by the board uh, that we couldn't reach an agreement on and the most recent candidate. I know Director Coleman did. I don't know if any of the other directors did. I encouraged you to do so uh, and see what you'd come up with. Uh, it was shocking how heads, heads and shoulders above the most recent candidate was as far as a, an alignment and suitability for the job compared to the previous one we had selected. I mean, the, the scoring weren't even in the same neighborhood. So I hope you guys would... Uh, the remainder of the directors would have done the same. It's, uh, you know, uh, the selection of someone for employment is both intuition, subjective, and objective. You can't boil it down to a, uh, you know, a test score exclusively. There's a lot. There's a lot more that goes into it, obviously. And so when you use a template with canned questions or things that are really just guidelines that you use to to then apply you know you, you get that objective aspect but it's only a piece of the pie obviously the way the person responds to an answer and it's a 20 minute answer it is not going to be captured by uh, a bunch of you know rate this person on a one to ten scale there's obviously a lot more to it and that's my two cents. Anyone else have comments? Yeah, I'd like to add in. And when we interviewed one candidate, we did discuss his resume thoroughly. And we had the prior discussions with uh, Mr. Morgan, myself, and Ariel. And I actually talked to Stu Witt, and I was impressed with the, uh, the form that he gave us to rate the candidates. And I filled that out and provided it to Bob, and I have a copy if anybody wants that. But I found an overwhelming uh, advantage for one candidate over the other one. And uh, Tuck in this stew, he he's, was the manager here for 10 plus years or so. So he seems to understand what it takes to manage the Mojave Airport. And we've had a lot of successes during Stu's days. And so I think that's the right guy to, to come up with a, you know, a evaluation form, you know, that I filled out and it's like night and day to the evaluation that I found. And again, I'm willing to submit a copy of mine to anybody that wants to see it. So I feel that, um, the majority that approved an offer to this gentleman should, uh, proceed forward. I would just like to remind everyone that the 
identities of the candidates are supposed to be confidential. So just thank you for using candidate one, candidate two. Okay. Directors, anyone else would like to comment? So um, I'd like to share the evaluation that I came up with between candidate one and two, two being the most recent. Uh, Stu gave us a, a desired and required experience and credentials varied. And I thought it was very good, fairly comprehensive, an awful lot of them. Uh, criteria, if you will. Uh, and the scores I came up with were, uh, there were one to 10 scaled. The total score on candidate one was 92 points. The score on candidate two, the recent one was 191 points. So it was almost a factor of two difference in suitability, experience, qualifications, etc. And if some of you are in, you know, it, the, the other comment I'd like to make is Director Barney mentioned that there was confusion that we made an offer and then hired a consultant to go find other candidates. And I, I disagree with that. That was the intent of the proposal originally from uh, Stu. However, in discussion with Stu, my proposal to extend him a one month contract was that we as a board were struggling with, uh, we we're vastly different in our opinions about what the appropriate candidate would be. I don't disagree that having an outside third person, someone of Stu's caliber with the experience in that position could bring to unifying us. And my suggestion was that he could help the board align ourselves on long-term strategic goals and objectives, which is essentially the same thing as what you would evaluate a candidate on. In other words, what the board directs the new CEO to do is exactly what you would want him to be qualified to do. So my point was, it's more of an education for us initially, and we would, uh, depending on the outcome of the offer we extended, we could tailor uh, Stu's direction. Obviously, if we don't have a viable candidate, he would be more focused on, and we would consider extending his contract as needed to focus on finding us a candidate. But if we have one, we could use what he had already provided, as well as his guidance in formulating good strategic direction for that new CEO so that we weren't, we were less um, divided in our direction. In other words, we can give him direction individually, uh, but he isn't obligated to do anything with it if it's not a unanimous vote. Uh, and so obviously his job would be easier and the success of the airport would be better if we we're more aligned. We're never going to be completely aligned, but Stu could help find the common ground amongst us. And, and that's, that's what we discussed was what the initial contract Stu was going to do. It was strategic direction, which of course is almost synonymous with what uh, criteria are and, and and qualifications for a CEO. Thanks. Okay, committee report. Can please keep me on. I, I can't hear you, Director Barney. No, just asking to make sure uh, Jim is all right with me giving a summary of the subcommittee. Um, so this is what we we're discussing now. I know we have it later on the agenda, but this is. Uh, no, we're not up to that yet. Uh, that's what you just discussed, Bob, and you put a whole lot of words in in mouths that. Uh, not excuse me. It's not, we're following the agenda, are we not? Um, you were discussing, it has to do with the CEO contract. So I am- We're on We're on action item 4B, approval of CEO contract. We've had discussion. And this is discussion that is pertinent to that. So um, 
right? So if, uh, if you wanted to uh, delay discussion about the logic of Stuart's contract, it would have been good of you to wait, but now that we are discussing it. No, we're not I'm discussing sorry. it. It's, excuse me. We were discussing approval of a CEO contract. The last paragraph you just said was discussing Stuart's contract. And no, we're, listen, going to be a the item B5 five is reports. Yes. It says board committees. Scott, what ability do I have to actually be able to speak as an elected member of this board? So directors have wide latitude to speak regarding items on the agenda. If a comment has nothing to do with the item on the agenda, then then you know we don't have to recognize it. But I mean, generally, if it's related, that's okay. Okay, this is related to scoring the candidate that pertains to uh, item B, approving that CEO contract. So okay, go ahead, Director Barney. But just to be clear, you're not giving the subcommittee report on what you and Dr. Bowen or Director Valentine worked on with Stu, in other words. Rob, uh, call it Jimmy Crack Core and I don't care, it's the same thing. All right, so that scoring sheet very clearly was provided by Stu uh, as a means for us to vector our discussion of five. It was a seed for us to build upon and tailor, not meant to be used as something standalone. So, and when it comes to hiring a CEO, you no, know, Stu made it very clear that his contract was to help us find the CEO. And that was it. So. Okay. Thanks for that comment. I, I don't agree with you, but I, I hear you. I also, Mr. Coleman, um, Stu helped produce the vision of the airport. And that's what he continued on when he, he was here at the last meeting. He said he can help help in any way he can, but it's shifted from let's have a criteria for pick, pick, picking a CEO to the vision of the airport and that. And uh, the intention of his form, even though some considered it as a draft for us to all review it and put the scores, and Bob had the score in mind in a similar format was, 189 to 73 with the similar candidates like you talked 73 was candidate number one 193 was so 89 was candidate two so uh, again it was overwhelming how uh candidate number two stood out above candidate number one and that's i think we should continue with the uh the majority ruling the CEO in place. Well, this is a bit of a false dichotomy to say that it's between candidate one and candidate two. We haven't solicited resumes at all. And it's not a matter of my opinion on whether or not Stu presented that sheet as something to be used as is. He was abundantly clear that no, that was for us to come together, come up with a list of criteria and decide, not it as is. Okay, I it, that that may be the case, but I think uh, using you, I, I, you know, I Stu is a valuable asset. It is not a requirement. It's a desirement that may produce a better outcome. It may not if you've already got the right person identified, um, and as a attempt to extend an olive branch, if you will. I chose to fill out the sheet because there was a strong sense from those who uh, were not aligned with myself uh, to pursue a different path using uh, Stu as a contractor. So I filled out the sheet myself and you know, uh, many of the questions that he had criteria, they were not subjective the answers were not that subjective. It was kind of a, if he has this qualification, it's 10. If he doesn't, it's a zero. 
you know, so there's things like, is he a pilot? So it's not like, I, I don't think I put my, too much bias of my own into scoring it. And the fact that I even did it, like I said, was an olive branch. Uh, we didn't need that method before when we extended an offer to the previous candidate. And we didn't need that sheet when we extended an offer to Todd or Tim. So uh, unless there's other discussion, I'd like to put it to a vote. I have continued discussion. Um, so I guess I kind of appreciate the intent, but I'm a little disappointed in the lack of understanding of what the olive branch, how an olive branch could have really helped. Right. So my biggest objection to all of this is that um, discussion was cut off. Um, this isn't anywhere near the level of vetting that previous candidates have gone through um, to include using the fundamental background check. But taking a list of questions that came from Stu, um, which it's a great start, um, but I've heard discussion that, hey, Stu is a fantastic visionary for the airport. We should do what he wanted. But then when it's pointed out, well, this is not what he recommended. Well, Stu's vision is not that important. Okay, weird, but let's move on. Um, but I, it, we didn't go over those questions together. We didn't decide to do that together. So instead of it being an olive branch, it looks more like just a lack of willingness to understand or engage in a, a devising a methodology with all five of us. Instead, it was, okay, one director is gonna decide we're gonna use this set of questions as is, I'm gonna fire it off to the other directors and just have them do it without the opportunity to discuss. I, I think the part's in the right place, but that's not an effective all of them. This is the opportunity to discuss and I did uh, make a suggestion to the directors to fill out Stu's thing. I said, I did it. Why don't you guys do it? And we'll talk about it. So, it, you know, I, I feel like it's stonewalling here. You're, you didn't, have you filled out, have any of the other directors filled out Stu's sheet? Yeah, I filled it out. I haven't filled it out yet. I filled it out. I don't believe it's a worthwhile exercise to do that with the list of questions that we didn't all discuss. It just looks like justifying the decision that you grapple with us into. And if nothing else, Bob, I would like to thank you for turning down my discussion earlier until I got our attorney's help so these people will believe me when I say you did that important. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. You have to lean forward. If I may, um, you know, just, I'm sorry. And this being in this as the current acting general manager of the airport and as the leader of this airport, it does bring me a bit of, I don't want to say fear, um, but not having a board aligned on a decision does not exactly translate a message to our team that we feel that this is a good decision. You know, this is not is anybody we're bringing in this is the leader of our our organization and somebody that we're entrusting with the partnerships that we have developed over the years and years to be and it does concern me to hear the discourse and i feel if there is this much discourse it is probably worth having further conversations you know candidates who may be the right candidate but maybe we need to bring come to a place where we are comfortable with making that I can just bring up some of the points as far as the vetting of our candidates. Uh, as I was listening, I did think to myself, I said, well, I got my, uh, hey, we want to interview you letter in the beginning of December, and I didn't get through to the end of March. Almost four months of vetting and references and checking in, and that was at a director level. I had three months of vetting when I went to work at a zoo. And, I think six months of vetting when I went for it as an operations. So it is something that says, oh, maybe we are rushing this. Maybe there is more to look into it. So I can see where those concerns are. But I want to ensure, and this is something that I tell the team here at Mojave regularly, that while we are in the process of choosing a leadership, is that we're doing everything in our power to ensure that we are bringing in a job candidate. Um, I never got to meet Todd, but I do know his time here was very 
short in the span of the CEO. And I think people that I work with were really like, well, was they talking to Karina or was they talking to Dave or was they talking to Todd? Or maybe it was Tim. There's been a lot of change and change is scary in any organization. We want to ensure that we're doing our due diligence and I hope that our board is doing their due diligence to ensure that we're bringing in a candidate that can sustain in this role for a long time to bring stability to the role so we continue to grow and build those partnerships and build uh, trust within our community that stakeholders. And I don't think that you know, the discourse that we're seeing today is a healthy path forward into bringing that person in. I don't know how you guys want to address this, but that's just how I feel from my seat here as a temper. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you for your comments. Um, I, I would just add to that that uh, we were not in uniform agreement on previous people we hired, uh, and that's okay. Uh, some sometimes uh, we had directors that favored other candidates for different reasons. You know, we have our own uh, biases, and we went with majority rule, and uh, the person was adequately qualified, but uh, elected by not a full majority or a uh, unanimous majority. And those people, if they were qualified, they grew into the job and did the job. Other ones have not. Yeah. It, is someone speaking? Well, I, I think it's all the Scott. Is there a legal reason we shouldn't? But this is this is, I I believe not. So so I guess. I'm sorry, I was interrupted. What was, what's what's wrong? I I I'm just making a point. Um, Items discussed in closed session are confidential, unless the board votes to waive that confidentiality. So, I, I believe that the previous people we hired was done in open session, was it not? To prove? Yeah, I thought that was all open session contracts. This is just like we're doing now. Oh, well, whether or not it was in. Oh, it wasn't in. That's fine. And I know it was with Karina, and I'm sure it was with Steve. Yeah, I just didn't want us to get into a discussion of closed session. No, no, this was fair, this fair. is just a yeah. clarification of his. Uh, okay. We have shown up with unanimous. We have been unanimous in the past. Okay, Doctor or uh, Director Allred, is there anything you'd like to add? And you said you had. I thought I heard you say you had filled out the form. That yes, I filled out the form, and mine was much closer. I mean, the candidate one and two are relatively, relatively even. So candidate relatively what? Please speak up. Relatively even in my scoring. Mm -hmm. Candidate two did did. Uh, you know, maybe 10 by 10 points or so ahead of the candidate one. And uh, I personally, my view is we offered the first candidate, uh, you know, uh, and I made an offer to the first candidate unanimous. And I think we're, I think we come, we didn't come unanimously to making an offer to this candidate number two. But uh, I believe we should make the offer anyway. But I also feel that, you know, I made the uh, motion to allow Stu to still be the possibility of a headhunter. I he right. say, make the statement that the uh, the matrix that he gave us was enough to follow to, you know, by scoring that matrix, would we qualify to give us enough information to make a viable decision on a candidate. I'm only assuming that we're making an offer. We don't know if it's gonna take place or not, or if the gentleman's gonna accept it. So let me explain the legal posture where you're at. The decision you will make today is whether or not to accept the candidate's counteroffer. 
which was the same as the offer in all respects, except for the starting salary going from 245,000 a year to 265,000 a year. So the, if you are voting, you're not voting, unless you want to make a counter offer to the counter offer and go back and negotiate more. What you're doing is deciding whether or not you are going to hire this individual uh, based on the terms of the offer starting at 265 a year. So just so everyone is clear, you are making the decision to hire the person. There would not be another step unless you wanted to go back and negotiate further. Okay, uh, I'd like to add some thoughts about the counter offer. Uh, it's less than 10%, whereas um, the other candidate countered with something that was more like more than 50% than our first offer. Um, the cost, if, it's, if you just want to make it about money, and the district's money, the cost of a three month contract with Stu uh, and bringing and hiring someone who's with relocation money that we offered the first candidate uh, would cost more. The break even point would be three plus years out. So, in other words, the counter we received from candidate two just recently that we're voting on is so minuscule, uh, even after three years, the additional money that we would pay would still be less than the relocation costs plus head hunting fees we would spend. If it's not just about money, obviously we're evaluating someone on their qualifications, of course. And, you know, we wouldn't extend an offer to someone who isn't qualified. So if there's no further discussion, I'd like to start the vote. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve the counter offer as offered by candidate two? Motion, motion from Coleman. Okay. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. Okay. Then roll call vote. All those in favor of hiring uh, one by one. Candidate for the counter offer that was presented to us for 265. Director Allred? Aye. Director Coleman? Aye. Director Morgan is aye. Director Ballantyne? No, and I want to qualify it. This okay. matrix that Stu Witt uh, supplied, I had no input on whatsoever. In my 27 years of being on the board, I try to always make my decisions on a defendable decision. So if the public questions it, or if our tenants question it, I can defend it. I cannot defend this decision that I'm making, so I'm voting no. Okay, thank you. Director Barney? The district and its staff deserves better. No. Okay, the uh, vote is majority yes, three against two. The motion passes. Next item on the agenda is CEO report. That was fun. All right. A uh, little off agenda for a couple items that have come in uh, while the agenda was. Um, in process of being made and delivered and make sure it gets to everybody it does. Uh, first one, um, thank you, Director Arnie, for encouraging me to include this. We have um, gotten through our license application process to renew our Spaceport ICE license. And fortunately, we have been awarded our renewal for our spaceport license and we are in compliance with 
no conditions. Um, so we are all set to go on that. That has been pretty arduous process to ensure, as you may know, uh, the commercial space transportation department is ever evolving, ever changing. So it is very interesting to be able to keep up with uh, the newest demand that seems to tend to surprise us at the last second. But um, we are fully in compliant with the terms and conditions of the license. And so we were good for another five years or until the regulation changes again. <laughs> so yeah, let, let's, which will be next week. <laughs> let's not understate, you know, not underestimate or understate how significant this is. How long have we been out of compliance? I don't that. Yeah. <laughs> so based on Ariel's facial expression and mumbling, you can understand how big of a lift this really was. And this is core to our existence and our uniqueness having a horizontal launch license. So we are finally in compliance. We are back in the FAA's good graces, at least in this regard. Yeah. And that is amazing. Thank you so much for navigating that. Yes, it was a very um i think i almost cried when i finally got the courage to read the email when they sent it to me today <laughs> it's like all right it's here it's in it's good um we do have some things that we're continuing to work on we're going to continue to work on it if there are any of our uh test site tenants on line thank you for dealing with my urgently worded emails <laughs> please give me this but it's been it's been great honestly our tenants have been wonderful through this process you know, I, I really said, guys, I need you to jump. And they they really came through and I got a how high from all of them. So huge thank you to all of our, our tenants um, that helped me through this process as well. Um, we also have a draft framed resolution and we will have this for signature. Uh, so this is the resolution of honoring Dick Rutan. Uh, so we wanted to make sure you guys had a copy to see what it would be look like, and it will be presented at the memorial service. I know that there was a bit of confusion on when it will be presented, but it will be at the memorial ceremony on June 15th. So I will have this available if you would like to look at it. And Lynn, you have the copy to sign as well. Lynn has the copy to sign. So she'll ensure that we get this um, to everybody to sign and we can present it to uh, his sister on the 15th. Our pleats. Um, so hangar development update, uh, local equity will be meeting with staff next week discussing exhibits, surveys, and site plans. We are continuing to move forward and ensuring that um, hangar development progresses. I know those have been words that have been on our minds for when I look at Jimmy and Scott for how long have we been talking about? It just takes time. It takes time. And they fall through and they come back, but uh, yeah, Lynn and I have been working very hard. I believe Floyd, Floyd as well has been assisting, um, making sure that we're getting them on the right track and we're getting things moving forward. You know, of course, there's no guarantees. I think I said to Scott, I can't guarantee anything until I've got a lease in my hands, um, but and permits on Floyd's desk. Um, He's giving me the don't talk about movement space, but we, we're doing everything in our power to at least get them back on the right path. Um, and we're hoping that we'll be able to continue to progress. And uh, we're also doing a lot of things in the district as well, that if for whatever reason, local equity um, should fall through, uh, that we'll have a template and a plan in place uh, to be able to either work with another investor or work with the county or work within ourselves we're working on properly documenting everything and all of the, the hiccups and bumps in the road that we've encountered during this project to make, you know, if this one doesn't go through the next one, a lot more smooth. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll be meeting with the county this week to do that for future projects as well. We'll have something presented to the new CEO and be able to uh, have a roadmap on how we develop here at Mojave and make things go slightly faster than molasses in winter at the Arctic Circle. Anyway. It runs faster during the summer. <laughs> molasses. Right here. <laughs> um, all right. So some highlights uh, as Kathy, uh, Kathy from the step out, but to mention beautifully the Dicker Town Memorial Service will be held Saturday, June 15th. Um, it's 10 a.m. We'll have our missing man information. We will have a flyby and then the ceremony will start at 1130 at the event center. And we are working on the logistics on how we're going to make that happen. Hopefully everything will go smoothly. Um, quite a few of us on the team 
making that happen. It is, um, Kelly, I mentioned that it's reservation. It's not necessarily reservation. You are not reserving a spot. It's more, hey, expect us to attend so we know how many chairs to set out okay. type thing. Yeah, we, we're just more looking for a head count, not necessarily you have to reserve or you won't be let at the door. And so how do you reserve? On our website, if you go to MojaveAirport.com, there will be two links. The second link, it'll say reserve for the, the group tan uh, ceremony, I believe it's worded. And then it's through Eventbrite, you just say how many people are attending, and then it creates an RSVP. Um, the far out, uh, we've been talking about far out for a while now, the hybrids and li liquids collegiate rocket competition, June 5th through June 11th. Um, they will be here on June 7th. Right, Lynn, June 7th? Yeah, June 7th um, at the Stewart Event Center. Uh, so we'll have displays, speaker ceremonies, um, and we are working with tenants as well to help uh, create a collaborative environment. One of the things that we want to do is as kids are coming through college with like far out and UAS as we're continuing to make the connections with the, not just the college students, the colleges in Mojave, but the college students in Mojave. You know, the kids come here, they get to do their competition, they say, Oh, you know, once they graduate, like, oh, I saw a booth for scaled composites at that Mojave place. That looked really cool. Maybe I should look into that and create those hiring pipelines and continue those hiring pipelines. I uh, keep us fresh in young talent's minds so that they will come out as we continue to grow. Um, okay. And then, so we did have a fun, fun photo shoot. Uh, Northrop Grumman's Stargazer got a fun photo shoot with CHP on May 9th. He is our only operating L1011 in the world. So it was very awesome to be with honor. And I believe she's turning 50 this year. So oh my gosh, really? I think it broke Jimmy with that one, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm trying to think, yeah, I, I was about to stop. <laughs> A um, couple things a little off. So the operations count, it did make it onto this agenda. We are only doing that for the first meeting of the month um, after the new CEO comes on board. That will be over in the director of operations meetings. It just helps for comparison stakes because all of our last operations counts were only on a monthly basis. So uh, in order to make those comparisons accurately, we'll be presenting those on the first of the month. And then our inspection, um, our Caltrans inspections, so our California state inspection for the GA side got canceled. Uh, their plane broke. So we're waiting on maintenance. Uh, it will be rescheduled. We're waiting on that date. We're expecting mid June instead of mid May. And I think that's all I have. Okay, great. Uh, board committees. We have one committee. Well, we've got one. And uh, when everyone else cleared out of the room and it was me, Jim and Stu, we looked at each other and wondered what we were supposed to do because Stu was there to help us head hunt a CEO. <clears throat> That's all no, we No, we recommend the board? No. Pardon me? I said we recommend nothing. Okay. Uh, next item is director comments and items not on the agenda. Uh, I've got one. Uh, I was flying in my plane, returning to my base airport, which is Mojave. And as I came into the pattern, I was number three on downwind with straddle launch and uh, a biz jet. And I must say it's remarkable how the tower handled that with just you know i'd like to give accolades to tower operations they you know we had uh every time they fly straddle launch i would say that's a flight test and they're handling ga aircraft and faster jet aircraft and the straddle launch all all making uh downwinds and approach to landing in short order and it was kind of seamless and uh you know a little teary-eyed, exciting to see that thing uh, growing in my windshield as I was coming down over the windmills. Any other director comments? Not on the agenda? Yes. Um, in the past, we've talked about fuel discounts, possibly for certain events. Mm -hmm. And so like two parts. Uh, I was wondering if this 
Rutan Plane Crazy event would be an appropriate one since since the large attendance? We were going to uh, discuss that in the first. Okay, uh, first and then my my meeting. second one. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> it just seems appropriate. Yes. It's kind of honor um, a lot of traffic, uh, and then would be. Does, do you have the authority to do that? I don't. Know. Yes. So when we redid policy seven hundred, uh, it did give the general manager um, approval to do field discount for special okay. events. Okay, we can handle it then. That was just yeah. my. That was my comment. Okay. So. No more. Okay. If nothing else, then we're ready to adjourn. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Recording stopped.